Now, turning now to this, finally tonight, I've got a confession. Every so often, speaking of feeds, I come across this idea that I see on a podcast or Instagram or an article, and it is so, so different that my brain literally feels like it breaks. And that's exactly how it felt when I was minding my own business, scrolling through some feeds, and I saw this on Star Talk between Neil deGrasse Tyson and our friend and theoretical physicist, Jan Eleven, talking about gravity. Take a listen. Quantum gravity requires oh, that space-time be quantized, but there might that. not be a theory of quantum gravity. We might look deeper and deeper, and instead of finding quantum bits of space-time, we will only find pure quantum mechanics with no gravity in it whatsoever, and that gravity emerges only out of the collective of tons and tons of these quantum so interactions. That's crazy. So that just like that water, is, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's crazy. So, so the quantum interactions manifests as what we call gravity. Right. The That's way right. the ensemble of H2O manifests as, as water. As exactly. Water. And, right. Exactly. And the same way you would pull out a single molecule, you're not necessarily looking at water right. at that point. Right. The you same thing with the... Oh but Janet, you tell yeah, me you can't gravity... pull out a quantum uh, uh, and say, is this gravity? Right. Is this space-time anymore? Space -time anymore? Exactly. Janet, you're saying gravity might not exist as a fundamental thing in the universe? I'm saying gravity might not exist as a fundamental thing in the universe. Wow. Okay. Gravity might not exist as a fundamental force. If your mind is reeling, don't worry. We know and we love Professor Jan Eleven from a writing on her Black Hole Survival Guide. So we just called her up and we're like, uh, Professor, we got to talk. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Glad um, to be here. I, now, I could pretend to understand all of what you just said before you dropped that huge bomb. And then afterwards, when you started talking about the embroidered quantum entangled analogy, but... I, I don't. I did not follow it at all. I did hear you say something about room temperature as an analogy. So can you just break this down for us? What, what do you mean by gravity may not exist as a fundamental force? Well, we try to understand the physical world on many levels. And right now we're at this kind of big macroscopic level where we're not seeing the individual atoms or molecules or what's going on at what we call the quantum level. And from this big macroscopic perspective, we have a really excellent description of gravity. We know how apples fall from the tree. We know how planets stay in orbit around the sun. And all of this is described originally. Newton described it very well. And then ultimately, as you're showing, Einstein described it as following the natural curves in space-time created by a heavy mass. So all of that works beautifully and it's meaningful. But when we look very, very, very closely and we look at the individual quantum level, like smaller than the atom, trillions of times smaller than the atom, we might no longer have something that can be described as gravity. There might not be uh, that particular feature of the quantum world, and instead it emerges out of all of these kind of chaotic and entangled quantum overlaps. Sometimes I like so, it so, to, to like a pointillist painting. If you're standing very far right. from a pointillist painting, you can say what's going on in this painting, and it's very meaningful. Uh, there are people in the park, and there's parasols, and we understand it in that way. And, and there's meaning in that description, but when we get very, very, very close to that painting, we see the individual dots. And those individual dots are not a painting anymore. They're not a description of a park anymore. All of that sort of falls away and is no longer fundamental. If that makes sense, it, 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 it kind of makes sense. So, so it, it almost is like when, when we're talking temperature and gravity. Is mm. gravity it, gravity still exists in somewhat of a measurement way, but it may not uh, be a yeah. force. Is that is that right? Yeah, gravity can emerge from the collective behavior. So, temperature, which you've brought up, is an excellent example. We all use temperature to describe the weather outside, to heat our baths, make our cup of tea. We're, we're aiming for a certain temperature. Temperature. But if I look at the water molecules in my bath or in my cup of tea, they don't have as a fundamental property temperature. Temperature is really the emergence of all of those water molecules operating together and all of their energies colluding to give something that emerges on the macroscopic level to be this, this sense of temperature. And it's an excellent and meaningful description, but it's not actually fundamental part of the microscopic world. 
Wow. That, I mean, so it sounds like Sir Isaac Newton getting dunked on the head uh, by an apple, if that even happened, he yeah. can still rest <laughs> right. easy because it kind of applies. But yeah. seeing it macro and seeing it micro at the same time, that's, I don't know what, I guess that's what you do in your work, and yeah. that just blows my mind. So <laughs> Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> Jana, thank you so very much. I can't Thanks wait to break me. our brain next. <laughs> yeah, anytime. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.